Okay, <clears throat> hello, hello. There we go, bring this over a little bit like that. Welcome, hey everyone. Let me take this off as well, put that there. <clears throat> How are we all going? Finally, decorators, the thing we've been using for three weeks and haven't unexplained. Yeah, sometimes gotta put the cart before the horse, I guess. Um, but let's talk about it today. Well, you've been using them, so now you can look at how to create them. I guess that's the difference. But anyway, hey everyone, um, let's get straight into it. It's it's five past or so. Um, so this week um, we've got the decorators lecture. Oh, sorry, today we've got the decorators lecture, um, and then the second half of the lecture is really the um, iteration three video. So I don't think this. Like the live lecture will actually go for the full two hours. Um, we'll go for about an hour and we'll, we'll, you know, give it some time to really talk about decorators in some depth. Um, and we'll finish up when, whenever we finish up. And then um, there's a bit of time so that you can watch the Iteration 3 video that's in the YouTube playlist. I've made an announcement about it yesterday. So you've probably already watched it. But it's nice. I think, you know, we'll do things properly. We'll give you the time to watch that video in case you haven't. Um, so today it's nice. We get to talk about decorators. We get to do a lot of examples, get our hands dirty. Um, and um, really, really break it down how it's working, which is good. Um, answer any questions um, and, and go from there. Does that sound good to everyone? So Hamish traders is a good point. You've been using decorators uh, in 1531, um, but you've been using them as like a, a user, right? So this lecture is all about creating your own, which is really exciting. But of course, as part of this, you'll understand uh, how it's been working when you actually did use it. So very good. Yeah, iteration two scores are out. Um, and I've seen a lot of groups getting their iteration two scores rerun. Um, most of them with um, a small penalty, some with no penalty, some with a, a regular penalty. Um, so again, I don't want to spend the, the lecture talking about the iteration results. You can use the forum or email me if you've got any specific issues, but hopefully it's all gone well. Um, and if, it, if there are problems, just reach out to your tutor as always. Uh, I know a few of you reached out to me yesterday after the lecture and hopefully we made some progress there. Um, so we're doing our best, but anyway, let's get to decorators. I'm excited. It's a, it's a, um, interesting topic. Yeah. Ask for the, uh, you can even just uh, message your tutor, Hamish, and ask them. Then they, they can maybe get it ready before, depending on your tutor is, they can get it ready before you tutor. So that's what some of the tutorials have been doing. So just reach out and it, it, it's a case by case thing. So it depends on the scope of the rerun, how many things that, you know, were fixed after the deadline. If it's a really small thing, then we're like, yeah, okay, don't worry about it. Cool. Yeah, message you too. Alrighty, decorators. What are they? What are we talking about? What's going on? Um, so for some context, this is like a next lecture in the series about um, writing clean code. You remember we had some lectures on that where we spoke some of the functional um, things that we're using, like map, reduce. Um, you remember that content? This is sort of the next um, topic in that little mini series where it's a it's another technique or another tip or another tool that you can use within programming languages 
um, to in the right in the right environment in the right context help you write cleaner, um, more sustainable, more scalable code. That's the idea. So decorators are um, a concept that allows us to, in terms, decorate a particular function in your code with some added functionality. Um, so it'll make a lot of sense when we sort of see it. But just conceptually, the idea is all about um, you've got some functions. There might be some common behavior that you want to happen um, during or before or even after all of these functions are executed. Um, and decorators are a tool built into some languages, not all, um, and some languages do it better than others. Python's a, an example that does it quite well, um, that allows you to do this. So the reason it's called decorating is that you're like sprinkling some decorations over um, the function that you're, that you're decorating. Um, but it doesn't alter the function itself. So it's not like adding code to um, the function. It's not like calling another function within the function. It's something a bit more baked into the language. So some background. Um, <clears throat> here's some Python code. And I don't know if you can see this, but there's like a cursor stuck on my monitor. And I don't know where it's coming from or what it's doing. It's like stuck on the screen. But anyway. Um, to really understand decorators in Python specifically, there's just two things we need to cover. Um, and that is how arguments are passed to functions in Python. So here we've got some code. I'm just going to open the exact same code right here. Let me just get this up. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Ah, close that. Um, all right. Let's just see. Does this look okay? Zoom. Maybe one more. Oh, maybe like this. Does that look good to everyone? Um, okay. So this is like, there's nothing happening with decorators here. You can't have anything um, more simple. What we've got here, we've got the main guard. In the main guard, we're calling um, these two functions a bunch of times. But the way we're passing parameters to these functions is slightly different. So here we have function one, and it's just using your regular, uh, you know, You've seen this a million times. It's just a function that accepts four parameters, the ZID, a name, an age, and a suburb. And then it just prints the, the data out. That's all it does. Um, so you've seen, you've seen this before, right? Nothing, nothing going on here. These are just four arguments getting passed to a function. Um, we also have in foo2, um, which is just, you know, foo is just a term we use when we want to make a function, but it's just for demonstration, so we don't have a name for it. And it's using um, what Python has called named arguments. You've probably seen this in some places. If you remember in Flask, when you, um, you know, you have like app, I don't have Flask here, but you go like app.run and you go like debug equals true, right? Do you remember that? Um, that's a named argument to... Um, the run method or the run function. And this is how we define a function to take named arguments. And you can actually mix named arguments and unnamed arguments, but there's some, um, they have to be in the right order um, so that it knows which arguments are which. And we'll explain that a bit in the, in the slides. But basically all you do here is you say that I want four parameters um, and I'm saying it's named ZID and by default, nothing gets passed in. And this is also how we can do default parameters, but we're not talking about this, uh, that in this lecture. But basically what you do here is that, you, you know, just the same, we, we pass them out. Um, and if I run this code, um, this is called decker1.py, you can see that it just, it does what we expect, right? It's just printing out the ZID, the values get passed in. In the named example, we, it's just, we're, allowed, we're able to associate the value we're passing in with an, um, a name for the argument, okay? Cool, all right, so that's all we're, we're doing there. Um, uh, here's the, yep, yeah, here's the, the thing that you just have to keep in mind is that non-keyword arguments cannot appear after keyword arguments in the argument list. So what this is just saying is that um, if you want, uh, an unnamed argument like a, it has to go at the start of the function. It 
can't, well, now it's saying that we can't call those, that's fine. It can't go after the function. And you can see it actually tells us, um, yeah, non-default arguments can't follow default arguments. The reason for this is really logical. It's just because, um, because these are named arguments are optional um, because they have default values, right? So I'm saying by default, ZID can be none. Therefore, you don't need to pass it in. And if you don't need to pass it in, if you've got an unnamed argument at the end, there's no way that it knows that is this one of the named arguments or is this... Um, you know, it doesn't, it's not able to figure out which value it passes in. So then the unnamed ones have to go first. They're mandatory. So you, you would have to pass in A here. Um, and then you have the named ones. And if you're missing a named one, then that's, that's fine because they're named. Does that make sense? It'll make sense if you play around with it. Um, but that's just a fact built into the language. All right. But what we're really just trying to say here is that we have these two ways of passing arguments with, um, without keywords or um, with keywords. And we can actually access um, these two separate lists of argument types. So um, let's go back to our examples. These are the exact same snippets from the lectures. Um, here we've got a function. It takes two named parameters, ZID and name, and then it's saying, get me a list of all the um, unnamed arguments and then also give me a list of all the keyword arguments, KW, keyword arguments. So we can print the two um, optional keyword arguments. Then we can print just um, a list of all arguments passed in. And then we can print, whoops, the dictionary of the keyword arguments. Why are they a dictionary? Because you have the keyword and you have the value. Makes sense. If we call this, this sort of demonstrates exactly what's, um, what's going on. Whoops. Um, so we get two things print, uh, we get three things, three lines printed. So the first is a ZID and a name. Now that name is none because why uh, I passed in none here. A none uh, name is the second argument in the list. Okay. But then I just pass in a bunch of other values. Um, but you can see that these aren't specifically captured in the function definition. But what, it's, what Python is doing is saying, well, here are two unnamed uh, um, arguments. So arguments that aren't associated with keywords. So those are going to be rolled in to this args uh, argument. And if you see when we print args, the second thing we print, we should see Mercury and Venus printed out. And that is what we, we get printed out because they are non-keyword arguments. So they get bundled together into this args list. So just think of args as a list, it's actually a tuple, a tuple, but it's just a tuple or a list of um, arguments that got passed in that weren't really given their own uh, parameter. And then we pass in these two keyword arguments. Why are they keyword arguments? That's what the KW stands for, once again. They're keyword arguments because they're passed in by a keyword. Planet one is the key, Earth is the word is the value. Planet two is the keyword. Um, planet uh, Mars is the value. Now, again, we don't have a spot called planet two and Mars, but we can say, or well, here is the keyword. Just give me a, a list of dictionaries of the keyword um, arguments. It's actually not a list of dictionaries. It's just a dictionary, a single dictionary with the keys. And that's what gets printed out. When we print out keywords or keyword arguments, we get a dictionary with the key value, key value. So you can see it's just a way to bundle up the arguments in single um, parameters. So that sort of makes sense. So we can basically, we can also have an, a function that just, now we won't, we won't get the, the variables defined, but we can just basically capture any function call with these two parameters, and then we can pass anything. Um, if we run this, you'll see that we get, um, a, first of all, we get a list with the non-keyword arguments, right? The ZID, none, Mercury, Venus, and then we have the dictionary containing the keyword arguments that were passed in. Planet 1, Earth, Planet 2, Mars, and they get printed out here. Do you see that? So you can think of like, if you, this function would accept any parameters, because they get bundled up in, in both the arguments and the keyword arguments. Yeah, 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 and, and Caroline, absolutely, you can, you can just access 
um, anything in here. The, tr the trouble, the reason why we don't just do this all the time is because how do you know what they're all called? You've got to have some idea about the, the keys. That's why we give them names and make people pass them in associated with the name. Um, but um, I can just do... So I know that planet one is a keyword arg, so I can go print keyword args um, planet one, right? And if I print this out, I'll comment these out. We should just get earth printed if that worked and that, and that did work. So you can access it. They're just regular dictionaries and regular tuples, which are basically just lists containing everything that was passing. So they're just catching everything. Does that make sense? Any questions so far? Um, Steve asks, why doesn't the ZID belong to args? Well, it does. Um, oh, where's my mouse? Um, in this example, it does, right? Z3, get rid of this, 418003, if we print this out, um, it's coming out in the args. Args is the list. Do you see that? No, I didn't do that right, but... Is it... Oh, yeah, you don't do that in Python, that's why. There you go. Cool, that's all right. No, you're bad. So, uh, that might be a little confusing, but um, hopefully that's sitting well with everyone. Basically, the idea is that we can actually roll up all of the arguments and all of the keyword arguments in these two parameters that capture anything that gets passed in. This doesn't really make sense for when we're defining functions. Yes, we can use it to sort of just catch everything else that gets passed in. There might be some odd circumstances where you want to do that just for your regular functions. But in general, you don't see this because um, you need to know what gets passed in and you want to make sure people pass the right things in at the right position. So you name everything. But this is a way to just allow to catch everything. Now, why is this important um, for um, decorators? Oh, there's another example here. It might just be talking about the same sort of things. Um, I mean, yeah, it's just another example. Let's just run it for the sake of completion. Like I said, we've got time today. Um, we have this function. It accepts uh, the, the tuple of arguments, the, key, the dictionary of keyword arguments, um, and I can just pass in whatever I want. There's a, a non-keyword argument, another non-keyword argument, and then a keyword argument. I print it all out. This is truly dynamic. This is truly dynamic. It is truly dynamic, right? We're basically saying, give us anything you want and we'll handle it. Um, yeah. Any questions on that stuff so far? So Sienna, if additional arguments are given at the beginning and not all the given arguments are passed in, how does it work in terms of knowing which arguments belong to given ones? If additional arguments are passed in at the beginning. Do you mean at the beginning of, of this with args? Or do you mean when it's passed in the beginning of a function call that has keyword parameters? Sienna. Like, do you mean... So let's say we've got, you know, name equals none. Do you mean if we have this like X, for example? Passing a fun, well, they're always passing functions, but do you mean in foo two or do you mean in foo? And not all given arguments are passed in. So keep in mind with this, right, X has to be passed in. X is not an optional parameter. So there has to be one parameter and there doesn't have to be two. Like, so name does not have to be passed in. X has to be passed in. So um, if I gave it one parameter, it would know it's X. If I gave it two parameters, it would know it's X and name. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
x is not optional because it's not named. And then, so that's if one is passed in. Um, if two are passed in, that is amazing. I saw, <laughs> did you see that? I've got Git Lens turned on. I was, I was um, doing some research on it. And even, that's crazy. I think it's correct too. If two of is passed in, no, that doesn't make sense. Oh yeah, that's right. If, uh, oh no, no, it's not, it doesn't make sense. Um, if X and name is passed in, um, name is optional, not X. Because name can, Python knows that if name's not given me, I can default it to none, um, but I, I don't know what to do with X. Yeah, GitHub Copilot is, it does some incredible things. At, anyway, we'll talk about it another time. Um, just don't use it to <laughs> cheat on your assignments. Alrighty, um, so hopefully that answers your question, Sienna. And that's the reason why you can't have them at the end, because it's got, then it's got no way to know. Does the placement of the stars matter? Yeah, so, um, oops. Um, they, they have to go before the args and the keyword args um, thing to show. It's so that you don't accidentally say like, uh, you don't make a parameter called args, I think. Um, cool. Um, is tuple also in args? Oh, sorry, uh, I missed one. Is tuple, it, it's a tuple, please remove the list comment. Oh, you mean this? Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> there you go, Penj. <laughs> I mean, tuples and lists are like so close to being the same thing, so it's an excusable um, comment. Um, is the tuple also in args? I don't know what you mean by that, Jed. The args is the tuple of the non-keyword arguments. It is a tuple. All right, and then that's the other which we discussed. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, if you've used it, if anyone's used it before. It's nuts sometimes, sometimes, but then it gets some things wrong. Anyway, we all happy so far with this? All right, so that was the previous slide, we're moving on. Okay, so now let's motivate why we have um, decorated. So let's first show an example of something where we might want to do this. So here we've got some code um, and we are getting, uh, we have these two functions that we're really concerned with. Um, damn, I hate when, when that happens. Um, so get first name is just a function that accepts no parameters and returns a string called Hayden. Get last name is a function that accepts no parameters and returns a string called Smith. Um, and if you're not sure who Hayden Smith is, you're going to meet him next week, which is very exciting in the lectures. Um, so we're doing a bit of, you know, for, foreshadowing. So we, these two simple functions that just return a string, no, nothing to even think about there. Then we've got this other function called make uppercase that accepts an input string in this case and um, calls the upper method on the string um, and converts the string in place to its uppercase variant. So for example, I mean, I probably don't need to go into this too much, but Hayden would become Hayden. And again, it's still a string. Gotcha. So that's what um, this function does. And let's see, um, let's take the case that we've got these strings, Hayden and Smith, and we want to convert them to uppercase. What do we have to do? Well, we have to call the function, right? Get the string back. So this becomes Smith. We then pass Smith into the make uppercase function, which calls upper on it, converting it to its uppercase form, and we print it out. So what are we going to see when we call these two uh, lines in main? What's our output going to be? Give you the, the second to let the server catch up come on yeah perfect cool thanks Nathan it's just gonna be Hayden Smith let's run this 
Oops, four. There we go. Hayden, Smith, and Jay Kunzel. Yeah. I mean, nothing crazy is going on here. Um, we're getting a string. We're, make, we're passing it to this function called, called upper, make uppercase. Um, and it's going to have a new line because it's two calls to print. Remember, by default, print puts it in a new line. So no, nothing crazy going on here. All right. But the idea is that, well, maybe any time... I call one of these functions that returns a string. I always want it to be uppercase and I don't want to keep chaining it in these list of functions. It's getting messy, right? We can already see that this is one line um, and it's, you know, look how many brackets there are here. One, two, three, four, five, six brackets on this one line. We always want to convert these to uppercase. Um, how can we do this? Um, well, the answer is that we can use decorators for this. Um, Let's go over here. And this is how we're going to do that. So, in fact, let's, let's go back to here and just build it um, ourselves in this example. So, what we want to be able to do is to say that any of these functions, get first name and get last name, and there could be, you know, more in this hypothetical program. We want to decorate them to be upper. Right? Now, the, the upper decorator doesn't exist. It's going to tell us that. It's not defined. But the idea is that, well, whenever we call these functions that return a string, um, I want it to be decorated with this upper um, keyword or this upper function. And the idea being is that now I won't need to call make uppercase. Um, I can just have that functionality in the upper decorator. But we need to, of course, define the upper decorator. Right now, this isn't going to do anything. Um, and we can prove that. Oh, uh, well, it's going to print it out as, oops. Here we go. So we get a, an error that the, the upper thing upper is not defined. So we need to define it. And this is the general um, syntax for uh, declaring a decorator in Python. Now, in this case, um, I called it upper. So I'm going to recall it upper. And once I've done that, um, you can see now it can establish what upper is and it gets rid of our, our warning. But let's, um, let me just fix this. But let's break down what, what's actually happening here. So it's a, it's a little bit um, I forget a way to get your head around it. So the, 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 the most important thing to understand is that upper is just a function. Just, just a regular function like any other function you've written, like the one here or the one here or the one here. If this is, look, at this point, it's just a function. We're defining a function called upper. Now, here's a, the, the thing to keep in mind. The parameter it accepts is a function. Now, of course, I've called it function. I don't know how <laughs> more plainly I can say this. Now, it's a function. Now, why is this a function? Um, uh, let me just double check. I didn't. Yeah, that's right. Um, why does it accept a function and how does it know what that thing is? Well, pretty simply, when a decorator is applied to a function, what actually happens is Python comes along, it comes to the get first name function, it notices, oh, it's got a decorator. So I'm not going to execute the contents or the block in the function, I'm going to pass the function itself to the decorator. That's all it does. All right, so if we, um, if we, basically, if we didn't do anything here, now this is just needs to re like return so that it actually compiles. Um, and now I call, yep, get first name and get last name. Let's not even make them uppercase just to make it really simple. Um, and I call decker four. Okay, because it's trying to call, um, it's trying to call it, but can I see, how can I do this? Or maybe I, need, I can put the wrapper back, but not, can I not do this? Let's see, does this work? Nope, what if I return, uh, okay.
Okay, well, I'm not really able to demonstrate what I was trying to demonstrate. But basically what I was trying to say is it doesn't execute um, line 14, for example, when I call first name. It just passes get first name as a function to the upper decorator. Um, so let's go back here. All right. So what does this mean? That So function is now a parameter storing basically the block of code that was defined. So function, in this case, function is equal to a function which um, returns maybe in the first case Hayden. Okay. And then what we do is we define an, a sub function within the wrapper function that accepts the arguments and keyword arguments um, passed in. So any arguments to the function get associated with the args and keyword args. They're, they're inside of this function variable. Um, and then we return the result of calling the original function, in this case would be get first name, passing all in all the arguments and keyword arguments because we know how to generically collect the arguments now. But we're going to call upper on that. And the, the result is that we basically called the original function, but then also called upper on it. Now, if this is all looking okay, when we run this, that's what we get. Let me just clean that up and run that again. We get Hayden Smith, but notice we didn't call to upper here, you know, make uppercase. In fact, we can just delete make uppercase entirely now. All we have is a function called get first name that returns Hayden, a function that calls uh, get last name returns Smith, but they're applying the upper um, decorator. If I remove the decorator call, oh, uh, we get just the regular Hayden and Smith. If I put it back, we get them decorated. Ooh, okay, some weird things to get your head around here. So I'm gonna read the comments and then we'll break it down one more time and then and then keep going. So, um, Hamish is saying, is equivalent to upper. Yep, with this wrapper, you make a function foo, but hey, it's upper function foo. Yeah, not quite. So we're not passing, I mean, Hamish just said that here. So we're not passing this function to upper. We're calling, dot upper on the result of calling the original function that is de getting decorated. So what I've got highlighted here is, if you can imagine, the original function that's getting decorated. Okay? So this is like get first name, in this case, no parameters, which is returning Hayden. So this becomes like, like that. And then it, calls to upper on it, right? Um, is the specific args being passed through collected in keyword arguments? In this example, there were no arguments or keyword arguments to the original functions being decorated. So these are actually both going to be empty. But what's important here is that, so basically what we're doing is we're wrapping the function that we're decorating and we're delaying the execution of it. In this case, here is the actual execution happening. We need to put args and keyword args here so that um, any arguments that were passed in also get passed into the um, occurrence that we wrap it. Um, so that's why we need to pass in args and keywords args. And we basically always just pass in args and keywords args. Although you can imagine some instance where you might want to strip out particular keywords or parameters. Um, I don't know in that particular case. So in, so Steve asks, can I say a function in Python is also an object? And that's absolutely correct. And that's the concept of a first class function. Some languages have this concept where functions are not just blocks of code that you execute with a name. They are actually first class citizens that can be passed around as data. This is very similar to a Lambda. Um, so this is basically, it's passing in this function as a Lambda. So it's a, a variable containing a function um, to the wrapper function. Um, Sienna says, is this a way of using a function so that you only need to write upper once instead of in everything absolutely want to upcase? Absolutely right. Now, 
So, yeah, sort of. Like, you're 90% right. We don't have to call dot upper anywhere else, right? But um, we still have to annotate each function individually, right? I, I can't just say I want to annotate everything, right? Um, Penj asks, how is this approach superior to the previous line? Great question. At this point, right, this is always the thing that happens when you demonstrate a concept like this. You, get, you demonstrate it with a really simple approach. And then the natural question is, what's the point? It was simpler just to do it the previous way. You'll understand why it's so helpful when we get to a more complex example later in the lecture. So I promise, just keep on to that. Um, so Justin, can we just return function args keywords args dot upper on line four? No. So it, um, a, a, the uh, decorator needs to have a wrapper function um, associated with it, and then it needs to return that function to get executed. Um, yeah, it just, it just needs to, I can show you, I'm pretty sure. So let me go like that. Um, you can already see there that you got it. So the, you got to remember that the args and keyword args are contained in this object called function that contains the function pointer itself and the args and the, and the keyword args. So we need to wrap it to unpack um, this function. So the answer is no. All right. I know it's a bit weird to get your head around um, potentially, but Basically, a decorator function needs to accept a function that gets defined, um, and then whatever it does in here, it's completely up to um, up to the wrapper. But I really like Penjay's um, sort of quote question: Why is it superior? Let's keep talking about it and let it sit with us. All right. Well, This is a nifty little uh, example here. We want to go to six. Um, here we've got the same sort of stuff. Um, get first name, get last name. Um, you can see these are exactly the same, right? The decorator now is different. It's called run twice. So what's going on here? Run twice is a decorator with its wrapper function, passing in the arguments, keyword arguments, um, and wrapping the actual execution of the function. In this example, what are we going to do? We're going to call, um, if we just do this, we can just do this. Um, we're going to call the function, right? We're not calling to upper or anything like that. And then we're going to add the result of calling the function again, all contained in um, the decorator. So what are we going to get out of here? What's going to happen when we call get first name and get last name with the decorator? Run twice. So this would be head and head exactly, but there's not going to be um, there's not going to be a space between it. That's the only thing, right? There's no space here. There's no space here. But very good, guys. Yeah. So oh, and they're not going to be uppercase, Stephen. Where's we're not calling upper anymore. So it's just going to be it's just going to be Hayden Hayden. Let's prove this Python Decker six. There we go. Hayden Hayden Smith Smith. Right? Yeah, it's a, it's a plus. Yeah, cool. So, I mean, these are the sort of, but you could do, we could do that. So we could do dot upper. Right? Now we'll get Hayden, Hayden, Smith, Smith, all in uppercase. You can, you know, we can decorate it. We can do things like, um, Oh, yeah, that's enough for now, I think. We'll go on to the next example. But, I mean, you can sort of decorate the functions however we like. All right. Cool. Now, let's see how it works when we have something that we're passing into the original functions. All righty. So, here we have a bit of a different example. We have this print message function that accepts a single parameter called a message. Uh, there's a, sorry, I'll just answer this question first. Um, Let's go back to six. 
What if the return value of function does not support the plus operator and we just want to execute it twice? Well, then you would just, it's just a function call. Um, uh, okay, in this case, it's returning a string. So if function was something that did something but didn't return anything, I think, would you just, would you, can you do this? Probably not. You would have to return. Cause like, I, I see what you're saying. Imagine this was like print, for example, so that it gets printed here uh, and not there. I guess you would have to, what you would have to do is return a function. that calls these two things. Let me... I wonder if you could do that, Lambda. This doesn't really fit right either. Oh, there we go. Does that? No, no, because you can't have multi-line lambdas. Let me have a quick think here. Let me just have a, and then it just, let's do a little Google together. Um, so decorators, Python, call function twice. Maybe that'll be enough. No, I don't want that. I don't think. Maybe they might accidentally. Yeah, I, I think we would just do it. Whoops, can we do it here? There we go. Um, so we define the wrapper function as a function that calls it twice. So it returns wrapper, wrapper gets executed, um, which prints the uppercase. This none, oh, this none is coming from here because now it no longer returns a string. Um, so when it, it's printing the none there, that's where the none's coming from. So when I run this, we just get Hayden, Hayden, Smith, Smith. Um, it's returning none now, because if you look at wrapper, what does wrapper return? Nothing. It just calls print twice. So wrapper itself returns none. If you remember from the, from the original example, the wrapper was returning a string. So the string was getting printed. Let's go back through our little history here. At, in this example, yeah, I don't know why I screwed that up, but uh, that was, it should have been more obvious to me. Sorry about that. When we called wrapper here, wrapper was a function that returns a string built by calling, you know, function Hayden plus function Smith. This returns one big string that got returned back to the original caller and that got printed out. When we changed it to no longer print, to return a string, we were trying to print none. Does that make sense? But if we wanted... Like the, the original question was, what if I just wanted to call it twice, but I didn't want it to return a string? When we just say, um, call the function there, call the function there. But the problem is here, I was expecting it to, re whoops, to still return something. Now it no longer returns anything. It just does two things. So the printing here was where the none was coming from. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah. And I'm not sorry. It's, a, you know, when you start, um, Whenever you turn the, the, the camera on and start lecturing, um, you start making silly mistakes. Cool. Good question though. Uh, who asked it? I can't even remember. Ella. Was it Ella? Anyway. But yeah, so the return, uh, so your, actually your original question is, what is the return value of wrapper or function um, if it, you know, doesn't support the operator. So if it's not returning anything, and the answer is just none. It's just none. Cool. 
Good, good questions though. Alrighty. Uh, close that, close that. All right, we wanted to move on to the next example. So we have a function that we're decorating. Easy. The function accepts a parameter now. This is new. We haven't seen this before so far with the decorators. And um, it looks like this function is, um, well, we're passing in just the ID, the number one. But this is kind of weird. It's um, printing message.text. If you look at this at this point, message does not have a property called text. Do you all agree? So if we remove all of this stuff and we just call it like this, is this going to compile? Or what's going to happen with this? I really, I thought the latency was lower on these streams. What's this going to do? Yeah, it's exactly, Alex. It's going to be a key error. It's going to say, I don't know what text is. And an int has no attribute text. Absolutely. But we're not calling it like that. Um, we're, we're decorating it. And this decorator we've called message ID to object. This is a bit odd. <laughs> um, I don't know if this is good code. It's good at demonstrating these concepts, um, but it's a bit odd. So bear with this example. It's a bit of a hypothetical. Um, but anyway, really simply, um, message ID to object is a, a function. In this case, it's a decorator function. So like always, it accepts a single parameter and that is the function being executed. That's always the same. Then we have the wrapper function. The wrapper function passes on any of the arguments and any of the keyword arguments that were associated with the original function call. In this case, um, what is going to be included in args and keyword args? So let's really think about it. So we call print message one with the with a, a parameter of one. Um, it comes along here. It knows that it's being decorated. It passes in print message message to the function parameter, and then it extracts the arguments and the keyword arguments. So in this case, what is args going to be, and what is keyword args going to be? So tell me what args is going to be and what keyword args is going to be. While you do that, I'm going to get some water. I'll be a second. Ooh, no comments. So let's see here, Tom. Args would be one. Oh, sorry, sorry, Steve. Args would be message, keyword args would be one. Interesting. Args would be a list of one. Very good. Args is message. Very good. Absolutely. 100%. Good job. Um, this is a single non-keyword argument. We remember before that means it goes into a tuple called args. So, so args is going to be a tuple with message and key, oops, and keyword args is going to be none. We didn't pass any keyword arguments into print message. Agreed? Hey, it's Tom. <laughs> Tom's popular. All right, very good. So we can query that args, turning it into a list and storing it in a variable called args list. So this is going to return uh, a list with um, message in it. In this case, message is the number one. So we can sort of track um, what's happening line by line. All right, then we're saying Then we're saying a few things in this line. So let's break down how to, let's go on this side. 
The first thing that executes on this line is this piece of code here, right? Because um, we assign the value on the left, the variable on the left, the result of calling the expression on the right, the expression to the right calls um, with, sorry, I just to get rid of a distracting tab there, um, calls arg list of zero. So what is arg, arg's list of zero? It's just going to be the value one, right? Because we're getting the value, the, the element out of the list. Agreed? So args list, so args zero is just the, the, the value of the parameter that was passed in. Yeah, we're breaking down what, what the line's doing now, Steve. So args list of zero is equal to one. Then we're passing in um, that one to this function called get message by ID. So we're calling get message by ID with a one. And this is returning, I have no idea. We have to look at what the function's returning. Well, the function accepts an ID and goes return for M in M, M for M in messages if the ID is equal to that ID and it gets the first result. Okay, well, what is messages? Messages is a list um, and it creates an object of type message with the ID of one um, or the ID of two. So if the ID that's passed in, for example, one is in the ID of either of these in the list, it returns back um, the first one that matches. So it's going to return back um, an object. <laughs> I know this is a bit complicated. It's going to return back an object um, one and hello. So this is going to get back an object, not a dictionary, an object with um, the ID being one and the, what is it? Mess uh, text being hello. And that's what gets assigned to args list zero. So basically this args list zero gets reassigned um, rather than just being the number one, but to being an object with the ID of one and the text hello. So it's used the ID to look up some, some value associated with the ID. Whew, that's a lot happening in one line. Then we have the next line um, that the args is going, okay, so we're basically then turning it back into a tuple, right? So, um, we're going to get back. Um, so args is going to be assigned a tuple with the args list. What's in the args list? It used to just be a one. Now it's an ID of one and a message of, sorry, a text of hello. Back into that original variable called args, right? We're reassigning args. Um, then we call the original function as it was defined with the same with args and keyword args. The difference being now args is not one or it's not a, it's not a tuple of one. It's a tuple of an object ID one text. Hello. which means we call the original function. What is the original function? The original function is print message. Print message accepts the original args, right? And we can now look up the text key that we augmented onto the original argument um, that was an originally just an ID, but now it's actually a message, which means we can get message.text. And that's gonna just magically work out if I save this and I, well, it wasn't magic, right? We walked through it. I run this out and we get hello. Isn't that wild? You know, this is all I called. I, it's, it's looked up, you know, in a, in a map, basically. If I've got this idea of one, what is one associated with? Or one is associated with the text hello. It was able to augment the, the argument in the decorator um, to get the text, uh, 
to get the original args expanded with the value associated with that ID and I can now access it in the print. That was a lot, I understand. <laughs> is everyone's brains frazzled by that or is anyone, is anyone getting it? <coughs> so Steve, <coughs> oh my God, check myself. <coughs> you, can, you can do that, I guess, but you don't wanna go too crazy. As long as the thing originally gets returned back as the function that you need to call. A colic, maybe <laughs> you maybe get it. Yeah, it's it's complicated. Kind of getting it. Yeah, good. This is a confusing example, um, but it's it's another thing where you're gonna need to sit with the code and and run it. But I'll, what I'll do is I'll I'll, I'll push. Um, awesome. Let me add. I think the others are fine, but let me add. Um, so now the live code that you've been accessing has got these comments on it that might help break down what's happening line by line. <laughs> Any more exhausting Eldritch monsters around town? Um, Echoic says, I don't know why you would want to do this when you could just write the function differently. Absolutely. Still agree with you at this point. Um, I've got more to, more to say. Um, okay. Ferron. I'm still confused why args has become a tuple at the beginning. Okay. Args is just always a tuple. So if we go back to the very second example, okay. We called it a list here. This was, this was the mistake that someone else also corrected. Um, args is always a tuple of the unnamed or the non keyword variable. So if I print, let me show you this example here. Uh, I think, do you do type? Yep. If I print type of args, right in this example, oh, I got to print it. Whoops. You can see it's a tuple. It, this is just how Python uh, wraps up the, the args um, parameter. And if we do the same for keyword args, whoops, uh, it should be a dictionary. Yeah, all good, awesome, good. Whew. So it's, yeah, it just happens to be, it, it's just passing as a tuple. We're turning it into a list uh, because we want to manipulate it. You can't really manipulate tuples. Um, and then we turn it back to a tuple so that it's the original format that the original function expected it to be. And then we continue on. All right. So it's three o'clock. Let's do the five minute break. Um, and then I've got a, well, we'll do a live coding example where, um, so basically, so for those of you who have been like, um, I still don't get the point. I still don't get the point. Yesterday I was reviewing this lecture content and this is where the lecture ended. So this was the last, I mean, I can prove it. That was, this was the last slide. And I thought, mm, not, I, I'm not sliding Hayden who wrote the slides or I don't even know if he wrote them. This is where it ended. We pre, I thought we pre-recorded the iteration three video. Um, so we've got a bit more time today. I think I can come up with an even better example of how we can use decorators really powerfully. So, Go take the five minute break, get some water, do what you need to do, come back. Um, and we're going to, I've got an idea for it. I have not written it out in actually like the stars aligned. Someone in the lecture feedback, um, overnight wrote that it would be good to just see us come up with something that's not, you know, pre-written. So I've got an idea for something. We're going to see how it goes. Go on the break now. I'm going to top up my water again. We'll come back in, f in, in five minutes. So 10 past and we'll just, we'll just go for it. Cool. Powder's one. <laughs> exactly. All right. Awesome. All right. Let's go.
Okay, I'm just thinking, should I, no, it's okay, all right. <clears throat> okay, welcome back everyone, are we back? I made a tea. As Alonzo <laughs> suggested. Alrighty, so. <clears throat> Let's get ready. Uh, let's make a directory. Whoops. Make a directory called um, decorator example. Let's call it. Cool. Um, do we need to use decorators in the final exam to be confirmed? I guess it's. Uh, you might need to know about the concept of them, um, but I don't think you'll have to define them from scratch, uh, Justin. But it, you know, conceptually, you know that they exist, maybe. We'll talk more about exam prep at the end of the course. Okay, so what was my idea here? Um, and hopefully I can convince you all that it's a, a good idea. So let's say we've got this uh, name. Um, let me just, okay. Just copy this. All right. Let's say I want to call, um, let's make this do something. So this function called do something. Uh, let's do, do something else, All right? So I got these couple functions. Um, That we're calling now um, we need a user so user is going to be let's just call it a dictionary the ID is um, let's just say one name is Jake that's enough for now I think uh, what's wrong with this What's happening? 
No value. What am I doing wrong already? God, not a good start. What? Weird. I think something just screwed up. Um, all right. So um, user is just a dictionary with an ID and a name. Um, and we're calling two functions, do something, do something else. Um, so the other thing I'm going to put in this is a role underscore ID. And we're going to say that that's one for now. We'll deal with whatever that is um, when it shows itself. Again, is something going on here? Let me just check something. Okay, I'll just do... Oh, that's fine, I think, for this case. I was just doing some other Python stuff recently. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that, that was my mistake. Yeah, cool, thanks. All right, easy. All right, so we've got this user. It's a dictionary. It's I. It's got an ID. It's got a name. Whoops, and it's got a role ID. All right. My idea was a decorator-based authentic um, authorization system. This is something I've seen before in some Ruby um, projects. Um, the idea being... We might have some users that we get back from the database and depending on the, the role of the user, let's, let's get some of your names, Steven, Sienna's always vocal, let's say Sienna's role ID of three, or oh, we don't want to just do that, Sienna can be back to one, something like that. Okay, so we've got some users, um, oh, that's not good, whatever, we'll clean it all up later. Uh, we've got some users, they've got some data associated with them, and they have this role ID. This is typically how we handle authorization um, in, in projects. Um, basically, a role ID could be, um, you know, like one is an admin, two is a user, three is a guest, for example. Um, in fact, we can do something like that. Um, roles can be equal to a dictionary where um, one is going to be admin, Two is going to be, um, let's say, user, I don't know, um, and three is going to be a guest. Okay, all right, so this is just some, some global um, definition here called roles. Um, but basically, we don't worry about that. All a user has is some role ID. And the idea is that some users can do some things in our system and some users can't. So do something um, might be, you know, anyone can do this. Do something else might be only admins can do this, right? So what are our options to actually implement this? Well, we could just have some logic in these functions that checks the, the, the role of the user and determines if they're able to um, do this, this particular function. We could, we could do that. To some degree, the questions that you've been asking over um, why, why do we need this? Why can't we just use functions? You don't really ever need decorators. You don't, they're not mandatory, right? You can do everything that they can do without them, but they make things cleaner. And hopefully this example might, might demonstrate that. So what we want to be able to do is say that, okay, only anyone can do this and only um, admins can do this. And you can imagine that if, as there are more functions that have more permission levels and well, it, it'll expand. All right, so that's the idea. So we'll want to make a decorator. Let's make a decorator called admin. So the idea being that only if the user that's passed in is an admin, will this function execute, otherwise something else will happen. That means we need to define um, the admin decorator. It accepts the function and it returns um, some code. We know that that code is always going to have a wrapper. This is sometimes called an inner function. The inner function is going to have the args and it's going to have the keyword args. Let's see how many mistakes I make as I make this. And then, well, by default, we know that we're just going to return the result of calling the original function, passing in the args and the keyword args. Right, this is like the, the basic. Um, and then we just return inner here. Um, oops, this has got to have two stars to denote that it's the keyword. This is like, the, you know, the super basic, like, you know, this is just calling the function itself. 
Um, so this is, this is wrapping it technically, but it's not doing anything. So let's say um, do something else returns. Um, I am an admin. Um, oh, in fact, why don't we just say prints it? This is, it's doing something. All right, so to print, I'm an admin. Let's see if I call, you know, it's always good to write uh, to, oops. Ah, Python. And this is called program.py. Uh, what's the issue here? Line six. What have I messed up? Um, let's go to our simpler example. I forgot that star on function. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here, thank you, thank you. Yeah, we don't want to unpack them there. Okay, thank you, cool. So th this is why it's always good when you're building something to continually build, uh, like compile and run the code, just to make sure you don't build all this stuff and then you get to the end and you realize something you wrote really early was broken and now it's much more confusing. So that's a, a hot tip there. Always run, always check uh, and iterate, iterate slowly. All right, so we're wrapping it, but we're not doing much with it. So um, we only want to call the function because we've we got to be careful here because um, it could be some security implications. So we only want to call the function um, if... Now, what's user? User is going to be passed into args. Um, args is going to be a tuple. We want to get the first element out of it. And we want to check that the role ID, oops, that's not how we do it, of that argument is equal to, um, let's keep it simple for now, equal to one. One being admin. So if the parameter that gets passed in, if its role ID is one, and only if its role ID is one, do we actually call the function? Else, what can we do? We can actually raise an authentication error. I think this is the syntax for it. So you call it and you give it, you know, um, user is not an admin. This has been reported. Let's, <laughs> let's do that. Of course, we're not actually doing any reporting. Um, okay, this is saying we don't need the else because because it returns on line 10. So that's pretty, that's pretty fine. All right, let's call this. Now it should work because um, our user is in fact an admin. If the user's ID is now two, user is no longer an admin um, and whoops, <laughs> that didn't work. Oh no, do something else. Passes in user, user ID is two. Paul, role ID is equal to two. Oh my God. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> cool. Thanks guys. Um, I mean, okay, so that should make sense. Um, yeah, I know it's, it's frustrating now because you've all, the delay. Um, all right, so we're seeing that when we're not a, when we're not a admin, we get this, uh, this error. And again, if I change it back to be an admin and I rerun that, it goes through and it runs it. I mean, that's already sort of a basic example of um, why these decorators are useful, but we can expand on this further, I think. Um, alrighty, so here's where it gets interesting, sort of. I think this is already not a bad little decorator, but we might want, whoops, we might want the same for user and we might want the same for guest. So something a guest, whoops, something a guest can do, something an ad, a user can do, something an admin can do. Guest is obviously three, user is obviously one, uh, two, and admin is one. 
This would then be user. This would then be guest. Cool. Um, so do something is something that a user, uh, let's say do something else is it something an admin can do and something a user that can do, but not something a guest can do. Then this is going to work for admin and user and it's not going to work for guest. So this is cool. We can have multiple parameters on the one function. So now if we say user and then user two, user is a admin, user two is a guest. I can call do something else twice with user and user two. Um, and well, actually a few things here. Um, let's just say, cause we might not, they might not be an admin now. So let's just say I am doing something else. So that we know that we made that function. But here's what's what's sort of interesting. Um, we actually get an error here because even though user is an admin, user is not, sorry, this is a bad example. Let's call this Jake. Uh, let's call this uh, Steven. And let's call this Sienna. Whoops. Oh, and we actually want Jake here and Steven here. Um, well, and actually what we can do rather than doing this, can this be an F string? This can be a thing, args, zero of the, uh, what is it called, name. So we can actually get the name out when we print it. So that's nice. Uh, it's got to be an F string. All right. Uh, there's another one. Probably should have just named that a variable called user. We can clean it all up later. So you can see here it says, let's refresh it. Jake is not a user. This has been reported. But Jake is an admin, which is higher than um, a user. And as Ella has pointed out, you can't be an admin and a user at the same time. You're one or the other. But with these authentication systems, um, they're hierarchical in nature. So an admin can do all the things a user can do. Um, and a user can do all the things a guest can do, but a user can't do things an admin can do. So we've got to um, sort of build that functionality um, into it. And we can do that. So what we want to do Let's do it for admin. So it's not just that we want to check that the admin's ID is equal to one. We want to check that the admin is, we want to check that the um, admin is one or two or three, basically. Yes. So how do we do this? Um, should we do, no, we'll, let's do it with guest first. So we don't want to just say that the role ID is, so this is saying we want to fix the case where, um, admin should be passed here. Well, let's say get passed here. So what we want to say is we want to say if, you know, that one, we can actually say is in, Um, the range of three down to zero going negative one at a time. Right. Yes. We don't actually want to say. That's fine for now. We can clean that up. Um, there we go. Now, is that actually going to work? I don't think so because I think range returns. Let's check this. I think range returns a, a range itself. So what we actually want to do is unpack that. Can't use that expressions here. Um, what if we print it and we add the star? There we go, that's what we want. So we can unpack with this star operator. This gets us three, two, one. So what we're saying is, is the 
does it need to be wrapped again? Invalid syntax. Oh, we want to check that it's in a list. Surely. Was not closed. Oh, there we go. Okay, I think that should work. So let's see here. If, if one is in, basically three, two, or one. So because this is checking it for guest, the admin is an ID of one. So if it's anything below um, admin, it should work, right? I think that works. So I, so let's, what we can do, we can test that. So we can say that do something else is something only a guest can do. Um, and let's get Jake and Steven who are users and, sorry, admins and guests. Quit out of the interpreter. Um, Python program. There we go, it's, it's running, cool. Um, and we can actually also test this. Sorry, Sienna, I'm gonna make you a guest, a, a poorly uh, guest account. Clean that up, run that, awesome, all right. And we can actually use that exact same logic for all of the examples, except this is gonna be now two going down to one, and this is gonna be now, um, well, one going down to one is this one. Okay, this one can just be that you've got to be the admin. I think that's reasonable. <laughs> cool. Alrighty, so now that we can say do something else is something that only an admin can do and only a user can do and maybe do something is something that, um, oops, I've just started running that, is something that all three can do. And to test this, we can call do something else with a guest and it should fail on, oops, it should fail on Sienna. Steve is not an admin. Where's this one happening? Uh, do I have something only for users? Steve is... Or well, Steven is not an admin. That's right. Okay, that's a good point. So we just want it to be user and lower. I guess that gets more complicated if you say that there are multiple, right? Sienna is not a user. That's what we wanted to show, right? So we're trying to call, do something else with Sienna. Um, so only users and above should be able to execute, do something else, which is what it's showing. If we don't call it with Sienna, we get through. So this is just like a rudimentary sort of authentication layer using decorators. We define these um, decorator functions called admin, user, and guest that control, um, you know, they look inside the, the object, the user object, and determine whether or not um, the function should be allowed to continue. And if they're not, they call an authentication error. Now, to answer the question of, um, you know, does this make it simpler? Does it make, not make it simpler? It makes it simpler because you can, you know, it, yes, these could all just be function calls that happened before, but then you're like modifying um, the body of your functions as you want to extend which um, types of users are able to do things. The, the, the benefits of these being decorators is that they don't, you don't even have to edit um, the functions themselves. So you're reducing, you know, you can imagine that if this is doing a bunch of things, you don't have to then put like the, if, uh, if it's a user, you know, if it's an admin, if it's a guest, you're just cutting down the length of these functions and to abstract all of that authentication into the decorators. Um, and often the reason, so like, let me show you, um, let me show you something here. So this is some code. Let's go to the app. Let's go to the API. 
Let's go to the... Maybe students. Let's try something here. All right, so this is some API code um, in Ruby, different language, that's not using decorators to do the authentication, but it's using these, you know, it's using this authorize function here. You can sort of see already in this example. So this is an endpoint called students that returns all the students. Um, and look how many lines of code are dedicated to the authorization. It's one, two, three, four, five, six lines of code. And the function itself is only one, you know, two, three, four, five lines, for example. If this was... Yeah, I guess you could have something called... No, well, if it's called roles, though, how would it know? What's the rip? What's going on? Oh. Hello? How long for? All I saw was RIP and then, um, and then you all freaked me out. <laughs> all right. Australian Innovation NBN. Oh, a couple seconds. Okay, good. Whew. Like, how long was I <laughs> talking for? Must have been me. Sorry, guys. Um, I can't remember what I was saying, but basically, um, anyway, what I was sort of saying, you could, I don't think you could really just have like a at roles, because like, how would you know to tell roles um, what you can do? The nice thing about here is that you're assigning a label to, you know, what an admin can do, what a user can do, and what a um, guest can do.